everybody. I don't want to be rude. Um, how y'all doing? This is your girl, Valerie, Sister Talk with Valerie, your chocolate smoothie. And I am here again for another Wednesday with my girl, Miss Vina. Hey, Miss Vina. How you doing, Vina? I am here and blessed and highly favored and all of that. I know that's right. Yes. I know that's right. So at some point in the evening, I think that my beautiful daughter, Keith, will be joining us. But we're going to jump right in, y'all, because we got a good topic today. So the day before yesterday, sometime about 3 o'clock in the morning, God woke me up because he's been doing this 3 o'clock in the morning thing. And I have committed to getting up out of my bed, not laying there so I could fall asleep, but getting up out of my bed, getting on my knees, and commencing to praise him, to pray, to worship, and to thank him. And in the midst of that, just out of the blue, like God does, the word adjust came to me. The Holy Spirit said adjust. I said, whoa, Holy Spirit. And when I finished doing my prayer and praise, you know, I immediately called my girl, Vina. I was like, Veda, I don't even know what time it was. Probably about four o'clock in the morning. So she probably thought I was crazy. I was like, yes, that's the word. That's what God said. So in true Vina form, I know that she has given us the definition, definition that we can yeah. go by. So I'm going to ask her for the definition. But I'm also going to tell y'all something else. The other thing that God said to me was, I was listening to a sermon. Here comes Miss Key. I'll bring her on in a minute. And he said, burn the backup plan. Oh, hallelujah. That thing shook me. And I've been saying it all week. I got to burn the backup plan because I'm a good one with keeping the backup plan. He said, burn the backup plan. So while I bring Miss Kia on, Vina, please give us a definition of <laughs> adjust. Okay, so, so the word is adjust <laughs> and it means alter or move something slightly in order to achieve the desired fit um, appearance or results. Um, yes, that is a now say it again, say it again for those okay. in the back. Okay, so um, adjust means to alter or move something slightly in order to achieve the desired fit appearance or results hallelujah and when slightly. Was, yes slightly like we um god you know hey god thank you lord sometimes we have to move you know like when you putting up a mirror you say just to the left a little bit a little to the right it's not is not dramatic like take it all the way on the other side it's slight it's a slight like you know if you um praying but you're not praying but one time a day. You know, slight. Come on, let's go ahead. You praying for 15 minutes. Go ahead, slight. Give him 25. You know, just a slight adjustment to get where God needs us to be in the right place for the right blessing at the right time. So that's what I was getting when you gave me that. That just, just a, a slight is not you know, major, you don't have to change, your, you know, like people say, oh, when I get saved, when I get it together, I'll get saved. Or when I get it together, I'll come in. You don't have to get it together because if you could, you would, you would have did it a long time ago. Just make slight adjustments, make slight or little steps, adjusting yourself to what God has, has set up for you because he says he knows our beginning from our end. He said he knows the plans he has in store for us. Hallelujah. And it's the prosperous is good. And it's the prosperous and keep us in good health, you know? So it's just slight adjustments. We put God in a box, in a box, you know, mm, that's we good. Always, yeah. So we put me, before you came on, we were talking about the words for the day and the word is adjust. Make yeah. that slight shift. It's like pivot. You know, now in society, there's a new word, pivot. It's like pivoting. Kia, the other thing that God said to me was to burn the backup plan. What, what do you think about that? I'm going to tell you what I think about that in a minute, but I'm going to give you an opportunity to respond to the adjust or adjustment or the shift or pivot and the burn the backup plan. 
Yeah. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, when you you talked to me about this word when you received it, and I I think I said to you, I remember saying to you the immediate thing that I thought of was God wanting us to be more mature in this time and to be strong or to to rely on His strength. And I think a lot of times um, the perception could be that God. It should make everything easy and we should just float through. And, you know, if he's not making it easier, making our, our, our dreams come true, then, you know, he's not performing, but God is a father and he wants us to be matured. And sometimes we need to adjust. Sometimes we need to persevere. We need to have fortitude. And I, if anything, I'm learning that like, Post COVID, well, COVID's still going on, but post being out of schools, going back into the schools, there's so much adjustments that need to be made. And it's like, if we don't, if we're not willing to make those adjustments and be flexible and be strong and be courageous and persevere through, then it just, it's like, well, what's the alternative? Just give up, <clears throat> just not yeah. the children, just not go on in life, just not hope for the best, just not endure, like, I don't know how to give up. <laughs> so I think when with God saying adjust, he's saying, like, you know, you make make some shifts, make some changes and be willing to do that. Don't be so inflexible or focused on what's not going the way we want it to go. Mm, that's good, too. Oh, lady, yeah. y'all giving some good stuff. It's good yeah. stuff. I, I got to tell you that adjusting is what I have been in for the last year. Just adjusting, not changing my whole self, but adjusting, self-reflecting, and then adjusting to those self-reflections. So my adjustments have been, hey, um, you good in this area, but you need to tighten up that area. You, you got this right here pretty good, but maybe you need to put a little bit more support in that area. You know, we talked last week about patience. Your patience is on zero. Maybe you need to adjust it to at least a two, you know, and that that kind of thing. And it's also in, and I, I have to come back to the backup plan, because let me tell you something. Every day there's been something in my head that I have been wanting to do, and I'm not going to put my stuff out there. But every time that comes in my head, I say, Burn the black backup plan. Burn the backup plan. And burning the backup plan is an adjustment for me because the backup plan is the go-to. That's what you do. But instead of doing that, the adjustment is to say, nah, don't do that. There might be something else you need to do that's different. So I like those two words, adjust, and I like those words, burn the backup plan. I also want to say, listen, I'm going to have to, I'm going to put you all on mute so I can check some of the comments, because last week we had some comments, but they're not showing up on here. So I just want to check and make sure that if they're not on my phone. But Miss Vina, give us some more good word. Hallelujah. I'm going to go. Hallelujah. Now, the backup plan, um, that that's a good one. Um, so often we want God to move a particular way. Um, and we... Uh, well, if he don't do it, then I'll do this. You know, if he don't get to it, then I'll do this. Um, you know, if God's telling you to move out of your current job or your current relationship or even your current home, you're like, no, I'm, the rent here is good. I'm going to stay just a little while longer. You know, we always have a backup plan. But I have discovered in my walk with God that God's A plan is better than my B plan any day. Hallelujah. I can depend on on his A plan, because that's, he, he says he wants the best for us. You know, he said he came that we would have life and have life more abundantly. So his abundance, he said, our finite minds cannot comprehend nor understand, you know, the, the plans that he have in store for us. So with that being said, God's plan is the perfect plan. And so burn everything else, every idea that it exhausts itself against the knowledge of God and knowing that God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And he did what he did yesterday for you, the day before that, the day before that, the year before that, when hell hit the house, you didn't perish, but the situation was changed. You know, when the kids was acting outrageous and you screaming and cussing, and he said, pause, 
go on to my word and speak the word over their life and watch the change happen, his plan is the best plan. So yes, burn the backup plan and make adjustments and not, you know, keep him in a box. He's not a a God that's in a box. He, he can do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think. That is the Sorry. word. That's, that's what I have to live by. Because if not, I would just lose my mind. When I look at my current situation and when I think about what I've been through, I'm like, what? Oh, I'm good. I'm done. No, stay in there. He said the race is not given to the swift, but those who endure to the end. So it's about endurance. and, and um, You know, and it's so apropos for the time we're in, right? I was really, I was thinking about the time and I even had talked to some of my colleagues about it. So, you know, we we are so used to how things used to be. Everyone throw that words out. I want things to go back. But in this current environment, we've had to adjust. We've had to adjust with how our normal day-to-day -day activities, how we are living our lives, you know, wearing masks and six feet and being able to, um, you know, be safe. Those who don't want to adjust have sometimes expose themselves to dangerous things. You know, we've had to adjust to politics, right? Look at the political system. If we didn't, like you say, Vina, adjust, we would lose our minds. If we really focus on, I mean, there are shootings after shootings after shootings. It, it, it hurts my heart every time I turn around, somebody killing somebody. And almost to the point, and this might not be it's not a great, a good adjustment, but we've almost become numb to some of the things that are going on. Adjusting to the, to, oh yeah, there's somebody else just got killed. Yeah, that's just what happens. So sometimes we got to be careful of those adjustments. It's even like when you're in a bad relationship and you are used to being treated poorly, you adjust to it. Yeah, that's just how it is. It must have been my fault. So even in adjustments, we have to be aware of which way we're adjusting, pivoting. Are we pivoting towards something positive? Are we pivoting towards something negative? Are we just being com becoming complacent with the status quo? Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts, Miss Kia Kelly? Um, I think I definitely think that's true. Like you have to kind of be mindful of what you're adjusting to <laughs> and kind of always be reflective about um, what am I getting used to? Um, that's really key. But I'm thinking about what you were saying about burn the backup plan. One thing I was thinking when you were talking about it is sometimes God will kind of gently kind of subtly tell you things in your spirit about what's to come or what the A plan is. And you can like ignore it and ignore it or or say, I'll get to it when, you know, when, whatever. And then that backup plan burns down all around you. <laughs> like, I know, that's right. Like, what the heck? I have to move now. Like, sometimes he kind of just gives, a, and I've, I'm saying this from experience of what happened to me this year. He just really kicked me in my butt to make me make a change. Like, he was real subtle at first. Like, you know, it just needs to change or it's time to move. It's time to move on. It's time to go. And I was like, mm, that's true. <laughs> but I wasn't trying to really move. I wasn't trying to go anywhere. Yeah. Sometimes you just get comfortable. Like you said, you just adjust and get into this mode of this is where I'm comfortable at. So I don't want to make any changes. And the changes will be made all around you. It will force you to stretch yourself sometimes because God always seeks an occasion. He always seeks for his purpose to be kind of traveled out or lived out in your life. And it's like, if he needs you to move and be a piece in a bigger story, it's like, he's going to kick your butt and move you where he needs you to go. So, but I think, I think when um the pastor Todd is the, the pastor, I think you're talking about who was talking about burn the backup plan. And he's speaking about like having like crazy faith and moving yeah. out on that faith regardless. And when he said burn the backup plan, he's like, sometimes instead of moving out on crazy faith, we set up all these little backup plans and conting contingency plans like, oh, and, but instead of just moving forward and taking step by step and faith in God and knowing that 
if I take this step, God is going to bring resources to me. He's going to help me to move 10 steps forward. Um, but we're so focused on holding on to what's comfortable, or holding on to the rail and, and hoping we don't fall or drown or, you know, that we can't see that. But um, that's another experience that I had in the last three years of I was a really afraid to shift my norm. And um, God was promising me that if I did take a step out in faith, that he would bring me the resources that I needed. And it really changed the trajectory of my life in taking that um, step of faith, because there was a time when my mom would always say, get into this, get into that. And I was like, oh, my mom, I don't have time. I need to go for my kids. I don't, I work hard. I don't have time to do anything extra. And then God placed it on my heart to do faith-based films. And I said, I don't know anything about films, Lord. I don't know anything of, I don't know anybody in the, the industry. I don't know anything about this. Like, kind of like Moses was like, I can't, I'm not even a good speaker. Like, you somebody else. But, um... God was like, take a step. And when I took a step, it was like all these resources came toward me and I was able to um, create that short film. And that film, I mean, it is, and I, I was about to say it wasn't even award winning, but it was award winning. It, it was. was film. But it was just like, it was, it was such a manifestation of taking a step, burning a backup plan and God just like pouring everything into me and, and honoring that step of that that step out on faith, and now it's like I don't know where you're gonna have me go next. But from that film came another film, and another film, and now get an opportunity to work with Maisha. And it's like if I hadn't taken that first step, that whole path wouldn't have been laid. I couldn't even imagine beyond what we can think or imagine. I couldn't even imagine creating three films and just finishing a fourth film, and it's in editing that set that was that seemed like something unimaginable and crazy and i know that there's more i don't really know exact plans of it but i don't have to all i have to do is like take a step take another step and yeah. then he just draws these resources toward me and and moves me the way he needs me to move so it's a beautiful thing <laughs> mm-hmm. yes I, I, and and i agree that you you have to take that step of faith because the Bible says faith without works is dead. And we have to have the faith to believe that the God that created the universe is able to just show us so much more. And um, I'm excited about your future, young lady. I am. <laughs> yes. Listen, yes. I am getting ready to purchase another home. And I've been all in my emotions about it. I've been tripping a little bit, right? So I called my girl Vina. I said, bring me back, bring me back. <laughs> I said, I've seen this house and I want it, but you know, this ain't lining up in the funds. Supposed it ain't mine, blah, blah, blah. She was like, did you write the vision and make it plain? What? <laughs> She's like, because you know, God is a God that likes it made it plain. Write it down. Not saying he can't do it, girl, but mm-hmm. you need to write that out. He might be saying, girl, you ain't ready because you ain't got the plan. You need to plan what's going to happen, how you're going to have the resources, what's this, what's that. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Now, Hallelujah. I got to tell you, see, that's that's what that's what friendship, especially those in the faith community, friendship for. They bring you back. We bring each other back because I was all over the place. I was like, and I and I, I was saying to God, you know, I'm your child. Like, you know, I am like I want something and I don't think about any resources. He will tell you in my life, there has been nothing that I have ever went in and saw that I had resources for. I had three houses. I didn't have a dime when I got them houses. I just said that's how I want. I'm going to work. God going to work it out. And it just happened. Like, that's a job I want. That's a car I want. And it happened. But as I'm maturing, as you said, Kia, yeah. there is purpose in planning, you know, yes. for the, because sometimes it's not just about in acquiring things. It's about in keeping those things. Yeah. So you have to be in alignment and have plans in order to do that. So I thank my sister. I thank my sister for helping me out with that. And the Bible says that a, a man that doesn't count up the cause and building you know is a foolish man and you're not a foolish person you know so write it down you know say hey god this is what i have this is what i want you know what if this goes awry what is this you know 
make the whole thing plain. And he said, he'll give you the desires of your heart. So if that's your desire to have that particular place, God is more than able to do it, but he don't want you to be foolish and, and, and not figure it all out. You know, you have to do the work. That's yeah. why works without faith is dead. Now you have the faith to get it and he's able to do it. But you have to do the work to, you know, do a budget. If I go in here, what does this look like? You know, this is what I can do. This is what I need to do. You know, where do I need to cut back at? You know, and write it down. And God is faithful. He's a faithful mm -hmm. God. And that's what that's what he was asking to make the adjustment. Because you are so accustomed to saying it and it's coming to pass. And then you figure it out as you go. He wants you to make an adjustment. Start planning. You know, you have to have a year. Start planning. You know, yes, plan, yes. plan for everything, you know, just, you know, when you said, I'm going to the Y, I'm going to do it a, the whole ride home. I can't wait to get back to join the Y. And you did that thing. You know, I'm going to quit, you know, this, that, and the third, and you doing those things. So just like you purposed in your heart and we wrote it down because you wrote it in the book when we was on the beach, you wrote it. Yes. And so then the plan played out with God's help mercy and grace and with your t determination and your faith so that's the same way he wants you to um venture out from this day forward to always you know write it down so he can help you with the adjustments because right. here in, in our in our mind we said oh i'm gonna you make a do list oh i'm gonna do this this that and the third before you know it you like what like what was I supposed to do? And you didn't accomplish it. That's why it's important to write it down. Because he said, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. So if you sitting at the light, oh man, I'm so hungry. I want fish. You see the fish plays, then you say, wait, I want chicken. It changes your mind and how you feel. But if you have it on black and white on paper, like in the prison system or the prison setting, we say it. If it's not written down in black and white, it didn't happen. So if an incident happened or whatever, if it's not on black and white and black and white, white paper, black ink, it didn't happen. So that's why God wants you to adjust in that area, just to make little little steps to doing things a little different so he can bless you even the more, you know, so like you remember. Like you remember. Oh, Miss Sharon. Oh, Miss Sharon is on with us. Oh, which one? Which Sharon? Sharon B. Hey, hey. Minister Pastor Sherry. Yeah. Oh, glory be to God. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that. Know. This is good, good, good. Listen, yeah. let me tell you something. In everything in my life, I am adjusting, right? Yeah. And when you come to a certain season in your life, it is not always easy to adjust. You get stuck in your ways. Yeah. This is the way I've always done it. I'm so used to doing it this way. But what I'm learning is that that sometimes that's a cop out of saying, well, I'm stuck in my ways. I've been like this all my life. Like we can't change. We can't adjust. We just choose not to. And sometimes it's to our benefit to make those adjustments. It's not for anybody else. It's for us. And God, that's why, you know, he knows what's best for us. When he says these things to us, he ain't trying to help hurt us or change us or make up. He already know what he made us into. He's trying to get us closer to what he made us into. So mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, Lord, you're right. You, you, you had the blueprint, print, the Valerie blueprint. <laughs> you knew what it was supposed to look like. So I need to catch up to your vision. <laughs> yes. 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 Mm -hmm. And I think Kia said it last week when we were talking about love. You, like some of us cop out and say, Ooh. I love hard. I go, I love hard. That's a, that's a that's a cop out that you're not willing to adjust for your partner, you know, or even for yourself to be happy. You know, when you've been hurt or disappointed so many times, I refuse. I refuse to let anybody help me, you know, because they always disappoint or they don't help to the point where it's complete. Where, you know, if you're going to mess it up, I'll do it myself. No, the devil is alive. We need help. And God put us here. He says it's not good that man should be alone. And that doesn't mean just a partner, but that means alone in our community. Mm. You know, we need one another. We do. You know, it, there'll be times when you you might need bread, and I got the bread, and I need peanut butter, and you got peanut butter. We come together, and we can make a good sandwich. You know, and I say sandwich. You know, <laughs> but uh, it's, it's still, <laughs> you know, we have, we have to learn. To, yeah, we have to learn to work together because that's the only way. Um, that God will 
really bring us to where he needs us as a whole, as a society, as a world, as a country, you know, as his his bride, his church, you know, to, to get us the spots and the blemishes to go away is that we come together and we utilize, make adjustments for each other. You know, you weak in this area, well, you know, I, I I cook like I'm cooking for an army in my house. So, you know, I I feed quite a few people. <laughs> and that's out of it's out of habit. So I'm trying to adjust and make it, but everybody's like, no, don't adjust, just get more pots and more more takeaway trays. So and my niece said something that I, I, I love to cook. And he's and I, I just didn't want to venture out to cooking and doing catering and stuff anymore because I didn't want it to spoil my love of cooking. I love it. I sad I'm cooking. And you do it <laughs> well, young lady. Yum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Happy I'm cooking. You know, it's Tuesday, I'm cooking. I'm, I just I enjoy it and it's it's soothing to my soul. And it's also pleasing when people can taste a mm. different the palates. But so I'm, you know, making some adjustments. Gotta get out of my now Hey. You said something, Dina, and I want to get your thoughts and Kia's thoughts on this about us needing each other. One of the things that I have to say is that I'm finding, and it might just be me, that people are not as genuine um, as for me. Maybe they've always not been genuine or maybe they always have been. But for me, people are not as genuine as they once were. And that's male, female, um, you know, partner, blah, 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 blah. That genuine thing seems to be missing from me. Uh, what do you ladies feel about that? You met, you met any, have you met any genuine people, Kia, any Vina? <laughs> I think I have. I think, I think people, so what I'm finding is, the more vulnerable you are with people, the more vulnerable they'll be with you. Sometimes when you show them that you can, that you're genuine and that you can be vulnerable with them, they'll open that space up for you. But you also have to um, watch how you think about people. So today we were kind of going over our learning about a deficit mindset paradigm, um, having thinking, ha a thinking in lack, you know what I mean? So it's like, if you think that way, then you're going to see problems as fixed. You're going to refuse to see the problems as being um, anything but a fixed problem. Like this is what it is. It's always been this way. This is the way we always looked at this problem. This problem ain't never going to change. And that's like just a, a, a lack of thinking kind of perpetuates actions that align with the lack of growth, with the belief that there is not enough with the belief that people are a certain type of way. So we have to be willing and speaking and adjusting, we have to be willing to change our mindset, to shift how we see things, how we see people. And I feel like it'll bring about a change in how you experience things around you. Um, so just like with women talking about, or men talking about, oh, there's no good people out there. Everybody is all for self or they're, they're um, in, and that's not true, you know, and, and if it is true, how do you um, come to terms or meet people where you're not throwing them away because they have red flags, but dealing with them in their humanness or, you know, even with problems that you face every day at work and saying, oh, these people, they they treat me this way or they act this way or they're nasty or they don't care about people or look at these policies and like. When you stay in that mindset of lack, then you can't see the possibility and the potential for change and the things, the ways that you can play a part in creating that change. Um, so, yeah, so it, it really was really talking about actually um, the bias that we have and the ways that we see. Um, our our children in school systems. I work in school systems, so just in thinking about the testing, well, these kids always score low. They always gonna score low, and that's just what. And then you start not only looking at their scores as how they did in that particular moment, but who they are. They're low scoring kids. That's who they are, and it's like you have to have a mindset of what shifts do we have to make in order to serve these children to bring out the best in them. And it's like we're not fixing kids. They're already geniuses. We're helping them to uncover and untap that. 
instead of thinking, what can we do to fix these children? You know what I mean? They, we don't have to fix these children. The, God has already given to them as gifts, yes. given to us as gifts. They're geniuses. We have to be accountable in providing them what they need so that they can uh, tap into those gifts and that genius. But yeah, we got to we got to look at how we think about things. Um, and I heard a sermon recently where the pastor was like, business as usual is killing us. So we have to be willing to change that and adjust the way we always thought about things. That that's it. That adjust, <laughs> even within your school system, like you said, they have to adjust to and change their mindset about what these kids are. And we ha all have, like you said, biases, and we all have preconceived notions when we see somebody. You know, you meet somebody in a tight dress. Oh, she a hoochie mama? No, she may have gained some pounds, and now that dress is. Stuck, snug like a bug in a rug and she can't afford to get another one. You ever thought about it that way? You know, we have to change our mindset. And that's why it's so key that the Bible says, renew your mind daily. We have to change what happened to us, where we grew up, um, what we are accustomed to saying about people and adjust and say, hey, let me look at it how Christ would look at it. Because he sees us all in the blood of, you know, God sees all of us in the blood of Christ and he loves us all. He said we are beautifully and wonderfully made. So like you said, they're already geniuses, but we need to help them tap into their genius factor. How can we, Paul likes to touch stuff to learn. Peter likes to be left alone and just give me a book and let me absorb it. And Susan likes both, a combination. So you have to adjust to each one of them. And I do think that there's a lot of genuine people out there, but they're so, their mindset tells them, go ahead and give them a lie before you give them the truth because I don't want them to prejudge me or think that I'm less than or I'm d different. And it's okay to be different and it's okay to be genuine. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm an honest Abe. I'm going to tell you the truth whether you like it or not, you know, and, uh, you know, some people can handle it and some people can't, um, but we, we have to be authentic with ourselves. And that's back to dealing with our, our hostile environment, dealing with our past issues and dealing with our rose colored glasses, how we see people, you know, I see people's souls. I can't tell you what they're necessarily wearing, but I see the hurt in their facade and their faces. And that makes me cry a lot for people because, you know, they don't have, when we say, oh, how's your day? And they're used to people just asking just to be polite, not that they're really concerned about it. But if you say, no, 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 like, really, how's your day going? I, I saw a guy at the gym and he was like, how are you doing? I said, I'm great. How are you? And he was like, oh, you know, and I was like, but it could be better, it could be worse. It's, you know, and he was like, like, wow, like you're engaging, you, you're really concerned about what I'm, what, what's going on with me. And so when he started talking, well, you know, and him and my son, they had a whole full blown conversation, and, but it alleviated whatever issue was he was going through. It wasn't so big, but when you're dealing with stuff by yourself, it seems humongous. Like, how can I handle this? How can I cut this up in pieces? But if we start with the everyday, like, hey, how are you? I'm really concerned. I sent out messages to people that God placed on my heart, like, hey, how are you? You know, and if you don't give me the real number, is somebody else is getting blessed with that real word. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, it was a couple of you know, I tried reaching out. I'm like, hey, listen, God had a blessing in store for you that you just, you didn't do the right thing. Miss but, you know. miss Hi, my cousin Cicelyn. How you doing, cuz? Thank you for everyone who's watching. I, I have to say, you know, I, I had some preconceived intentions when I said people are not genuine because <laughs> I had somebody in mind. Because I have to say that God has placed some wonderful people in my life. Like God has placed some powerful, God-fearing, praying, loving women in my life. And I don't take that for granted. Like I know that that is a special thing that he placed those women around me. And I also understand 
the importance of listening to God and praying when someone is placed in your spirit. So now as, and when I'm having my morning prayer, God will drop someone in my spirit and I'll say, yep, okay, God, I got to reach out to that person, just send them a prayer, say what, what God says. You don't know, like, you know, we are God's mouth and his ears and his eyes on this earth and just our are being obedient and translating what he said to us to someone could change their life because they know like i was just feeling this way or i was just feeling like that and this person's just their text or their call or their whatever lifted me right so i there are times when i'm reaching out to my friends how you doing i know vena does that all the time hey sis i'm just checking on you right you reach out to someone, hey, how you doing? I just I just want to see how you do. I just want to say hi. Oh, I love you. That means a lot to people. And a lot of times we seem to not be able to get past, and it's difficult, the pile up that we have in front of us in our lives. The easiest way to get out of your rut about what's going on in your life is to bless somebody else. Because you can't focus on all the things that's wrong with you or going along with you when you're thinking about, gee, I wonder how Susie is doing. Because Susie, you might think your stuff is tore up. Lord have mercy, Susie got some tore up stuff for you if you reach out to Susie. And God knows that. He knows you sit up there complaining about the fact that your feet hurt and Susie ain't got no feet. All right? You better call Susie and tell her, how you doing, Susie? You need, And that's real. You complaining about, you know, we might even complain about, because I've done it. Lord, I don't know how I'm going to pay this bill or... You know, oh my rent is short, and you but you you sitting in the house saying that all these people outside trying to say if I could get a room, hallelujah. So we got to sometimes know that us thinking beyond ourselves helps us. And the fact is that there's always somebody in a worse place than you. I don't care how bad you think it is in your life. Please believe me that somebody else is having it worse. Miss Kelly, I'm going to put y'all on mute again and check the message. He went on mute too. Nah. That's my y'all. That's my job. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, she just ain't gonna say nothing. Okay, well, I ain't oh, gonna. Say <laughs> I didn't hear you. What no, was I was talking about how we perceive the troubles that we go through and how there's always somebody out there that has it worse. Well, you know, I've been thinking about, and I think we all should pray for, maybe we could pray for them before we end the live. Um, you know, the people from Haiti who are going through it i it's just so terrible to see and there's so many babies and children who just seem like they're just so they're in shock they're in like it's just oh it's so ugly to me it's so disgusting to me um especially when i don't know if you want to get into all that but i know <laughs> i people cannot imagine if they were i don't know for example some european of people, immigrants, <laughs> would they be just treated this way? It's terrible. It's terrible. It's terrible. And I remember when I was a child, I used to think about um, things that happened in history that I would learn about. And I would say, well, what were people doing at that time when that was going on? Like, how did we stand by and just allow something like that to happen? And now it's like, you know, there's some pretty terrible stuff going on. It's, it's, it makes me feel like, well, what, what am I going to do or how can I help? You know, um, I really hope that our vice president who has said that she sees that this as an atrocity, I, I'm not quoting her a word, but who sees people being treated like this as wrong. It's like, okay, well, what's going to be the action behind it to alleviate at least make a plan to treat people with as humans as human beings like we got to do better of always thinking of that first be you you know what's our humanitarian response going to be um yeah and what are we teaching 
You know what I mean? You got like you teaching you teaching kids that if somebody in, in, infringes on your property, you beat them back down till they get off of it. Like, I how can I tell my daughters uh, be be kind to one another and share? And if if someone does something that you don't agree with, at least return it with a kind response and think about them as a human and respect them as a human. And they look at our country and they're like, that ain't what, what the message is. The message is protect what what's ours at all costs. But it's like you reap what you sow. And, you know, we're lucky that our country hasn't experienced an earthquake of that magnitude where we would have to seek mm. asylum on other lands. But I bet you, and it, it, if there was to be an earthquake on the U.S. soil, we would feel almost entitled to be taken in and housed and, and treated with respect and humanity by other countries. It, I mean, the earth, or the earth moves in earthquakes and moves how it wants to. So it's not, there's but no- here, Here's the thing, Kia. We don't even have to look at how we treat other people from other countries. All we have to do is look in our backyard. We have Louisiana. We have yes. people. Listen, this is the country that Puerto Rico children. Okay, Puerto Rico. Okay, mm -hmm. this is the country that caged children. What we have to, and I, and I'm gonna have a part two of this conversation because I think it's really important. What we have to do as people is recognize that we're gonna have to start taking care of ourselves, right? Yeah. We can't wait for the United States to take care of us. I don't care who we envision ourselves as being. They're not going to take care of our children. They're not going to take care of us. They are not. They show us every single day where they where our value is. Every day. That's not that's not conjecture. That is not conspiracy theory. That is open your eyes. So when you can see and you know that if those, if Haiti people were a different color, they would not be treated that way. Those are facts. That's not racism. That's facts, because we've seen it. Yes, we're supposed to be examples to how you treat people. So we have to tell our children the truth. That's what we have to do. We have to, we have to operate in love. We always have to operate in the spirit of God, right? But we have to, because but the word is truth. And the truth is, just like I say to my grandson, who is 18 years old, who, and I said, I had this conversation with Kia, her son. Um, as he goes out into the world, he needs to know who he is. He's brilliant. He's God's child. He is extraordinary, but he's a black man. And hey. everywhere he goes, he's going to be seen as a black man. I don't care how well he's doing, that's facts. So we have to equip them with the knowledge of. Yes, we want our children to do well. We want to send them to the best schools. We want them to excel, and they can because we are brilliant people. But we cannot let them get it twisted and think, "Oh, I'm I'm on this side. I'm a ride." No, you need to be careful. That's just the way it is. And we need to be taking care of each other. We have enough faith communities in this United States of America. Hell, in Virginia, to house and feed and clothe millions of people i'm gonna stop right there because i'll be on the soapbox about this particular issue <laughs> i'm gonna stop yeah. right there and let you ladies chime in on our in our last 15 minutes no I, I i totally agree and i think you're right on point when you say we have to take care of ourselves so recently i posted about a man who was um during hurricane katrina katrina took a school bus that he owned and filled it with a bunch of people who needed to get out of that area and get to a uh, dome in texas um and he was a, the first responder when the government did not move or send um help and you know it's nobody pays attention to that but it's like we would have to be the ones to kind of say okay how are we going to take care of this issue and i think it's it, more and more we have to realize or figure out how we could be more self-reliant because when and and Katrina really taught me that lesson because when slavery ended they kind of turned us out it was like like cattle you're too old or okay you're not a slave anymore go on do what you got to do no food no resources no education nothing 
And it was like, we had to make a way. We had to grow our food. We had to figure it out. We had to know the land. We had to know how to survive. And then when I saw those people in the dome fighting, like just tearing at each other and really not have no, no sense of resource or self-reliance, it was like, we're in a bad state. We're in a bad state. Like adjust. We have to shift the way we think about how to take care of ourselves, how to cover ourselves, how to cover one another. Mm -hmm. I um, I just think that th this topic here is is one that has probably a many many parts that we can do, um, but we have to teach our young people, and um, you know that you have you are living in a place that doesn't um, like you. That despise you not because of who you are, but because of the way you look. My son has locks in his hair, and he's five nine, fourteen years old, um, two ten, size fifteen shoe. And the other day, Monday, I was coming out of food line. And I ride the buggy, and the buggy go about two point two miles per second. <laughs> That's it. It's going. And so he went out to the car to put the groceries in. And it was a white lady or Caucasian woman pulled in next to my son, to, to where my son was standing at my car. And, he, you know, I'm coming across a little bit slow and he's standing there waiting on me. And she jumps out of her vehicle. She had to be every bit of 70, 60, 70, 71. And she said, what are you doing? What are you waiting for? And he's only 14. So I was like, ah! And I used my outside voice to get her attention <laughs> to look at me. I said, uh, what do you need? Like, what? But just the sheer fact that she felt intimidated about by him standing by my car, holding my keys, his, his essential car, in his own area, not around her car, and she pulled into the spot. She could have easily pulled out, but she thought that she had the authority to tell him to leave the area. The devil is a liar. I know we that. Have to make, we, we have to make them aware of, you have to be more aware of your surroundings and them than they should be of you. And it, it, um, it hurt my heart. Because I've been telling him, son, you're big. You have to watch. You have to pay attention to what's going on. But that's sad. And that she felt she had the authority to tell him to shoo. Get away. What are you waiting on me? So you think he he watched you come from wherever you came from Say she got money. I'm going to wait for her. The devil. We have to adjust our minds. We have to change our mindset, them, us, about everything, and really seek God's face about being careful how we prejudge. He looks like he's about 17, 18. He's 14. He's a baby. He over there like, Mom, could you hurry up in the little buggy so we can go home so I can eat these groceries you just bought? That's what he's thinking. And she felt totally intimidated and then thought that she could be rude and disrespectful and tell him to go away. Lady. That's what privilege says and thinks. Kia, someone said hi. That is what privilege says and thinks. And it does hurt our hearts. It is yeah. it is wearing, it is grueling. I I I heard someone say recently that um no to to people who are Caucasian um, no, we don't want you. You are not responsible for what your ancestors did. However, what your ancestors did provided you with a privilege and tore me up. So as someone who understands that, what your responsibility can be is to right the wrongs by having real true conversations at your dinner table, if you play golf on the golf course, you know, with your friends and families, voting in a way that supports equity, speaking truth to power, those are the things that you can do. You don't have to feel guilty about anything, but you can open your eyes and see what's going on and try to be more um, 
stand for justice, okay? Because you did that when in your face, George Floyd was massacred, assassinated because you had no other choice. But, you know, unfortunately as the law and the, and, and the anguish and the surprise and the outrage of George Floyd dissipates, so does your outrage. But guess what? There was a hundreds and hundreds of George Floyds that were murdered in the same way after George Floyd. And that's something that you can do something about. And it wasn't just others killing us. It was us killing us. We have to be oh. intolerable of the behavior, period, and call it out no matter. People say to me all the time, don't talk about black on black crime. I'm talking about whatever on black because I'm pro-black. I mean, I'm mad if you're killing us too. Hello? Because it's ridiculous. Yeah. So, yeah, we got to, we, because look, even Jesus had righteous indignation. Let me, what y'all doing? Y'all doing what at my father's house? What? What? Yeah. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. That's what <laughs> I'm talking about. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. That's mm -hmm. where the tables will turn comes from. Because <laughs> he was like, <laughs> turning tables over like, oh, we're not doing this. And now, yeah. like, there's a lot of uh, misinformation about who Jesus was, especially nowadays. People try to paint him as this meek, like, weak man mm -hmm. who was, like, um, judgmental and, you know, not at all. You know, he was, like, like a like a righteous brother. Like a, yeah. <laughs> he was a carpenter. He was for the people. He was for the community. He loved people. He didn't judge people. He just wanted everybody yeah. to be good. Like, yeah. I just want to look. And we know people like that who people might think is a little rough around the edges. I think about like Tupac or somebody. A little rough around <laughs> the edges, but just like loves people with all his yeah. all their hearts. When I think about Jesus as a brother, as who he could, who, what his spirit embodied, I think about that loving just you could see his soul in his eyes and he just wants you to be good. Like, I'm here for you. I want you to be good. I want you to do good. What can I do to be there for you? That's what I think of. And people just, we got it. That's another adjustment. Adjustment in the way that we have programmed ourselves to believe that he was. But when you read the word, you see he was like the guy that would play basketball with the kids in the neighborhood and make sure mm -hmm. they got ice cream from the ice cream truck. Like yeah. the little children come to me, little children. Like I want the kids to be good. I want, I want to make sure they're good. And Oh, you mourning over here. I'm going to come and mourn with you. I'm going to come and feel your pain. Like we have to think, we have to readjust how we see him as a, as a figure. Yeah. I love that. I love that. And yeah. I think that how we help people do that kid is your faith based films that I've been telling you to do. <laughs> Bring, bring Jesus into 2021, 2022. Play him yeah. out like how, how young people can relate to him. Because yeah. Jesus was, you know, he was an OG. He hung around with people that some Pharisees and Sadducees could be those folks that's been in church for 99 years and think that they own the pew. And yeah. here comes Jesus walking in with people that are from prison. They used to be drug dealers. They used to be yes. and pimps. And they're like, oh, no. No, Jesus ain't hanging out with them. He's like, yo, these my peeps. Yes. <laughs> I yes. love them the long way. That's yes. <laughs> yes. All right, y'all. This has been so wonderful. Yes. We are coming to the end of our hour. I have so enjoyed you guys. I have enjoyed those who have joined us. Listen, if you guys would have a topic that you want to throw out to us, please DM, slide up in my DM, right? <laughs> DM myself or Vina or Kia. Let us know the topic. We'll be willing to talk about it. Please believe and know, though, because everything going to wrap around God because we all about God. We God's mm -hmm. children. So, but we, we, we like to talk about it. Bringing how it's, it really is about how to live a life that is God centered in today, and that's yeah. not walking around beating people over the top of the head with the Bible and preaching to them no. all day. That's like, listen, that's being transparent about the fact that we all go through things, but how do we work it out together? How do we, yeah. how do we come together and like, be on one accord? How do we commune together and conversate together and get through some of this madness that's going on? That's, that's all we trying to do. 
Mm. So this is your girl, Valerie. Sister Talk with Valerie, your chocolate smoothie. And Miss Vina. Vina, hi. Do you have any parting words, Vina and Kia? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. I just want to say that that the word of God is our foundation. And the Bible says love covers a multitude of sin. And if we begin to love each other in spite of what we look like, what side of town we from, what country, just love one one another. Love, love is the key. We talked about that before, but love is the key, you know, and respect each other. Love and respect. Kia, your honor's on trying to give us time limits. We ain't thinking about her. Go ahead, Kia. <laughs> no, I just, um, yeah, I love that you said that, Vina. And I and I also love, I mean, going along with what you just said, that you that you're able to just spring forth the word from your heart, like on a dime. Like when something said, you like what the Bible says. About, that's beautiful. That's wonderful. Like, you know, like I was talking to my daughters about planning the word of God in your heart and it'll just spring forth in your actions, in your word, in your thinking, in the way you see things. And then you could see the word of God everywhere in, in places you would never imagine. You could see the wisdom of the, the Bible, of the word of God, just playing out all over. So it inspires me to be more diligent and study to show myself approved to like yeah. really the word in my heart, to plant those seeds in my heart. So, yeah, I really appreciate that. That um, So, yeah, and I, I agree, like we need to spread love to one another. And your granddaughter um, was like, what podcast is that? Is that Graham Gammy being the chocolate smoothie? <laughs> Is that chocolate smoothie pond? I know it was Zoe that said that. I know yes, it was Zoe. Did. Yes, she did. <laughs> she tells people in her class, my, my Gammy's famous. She had her movie in Times Square and she's on podcast. And she's just bragging on you. <laughs> See, you know what? I, that humbles me, but you, that, that, like, if I left here today, that would be my whole prayer. I want to leave a legacy for my grandchildren. And if my grandchildren think I'm all good, if they think I'm the bomb, I don't care who else think I'm <laughs> They definitely think that. Like, Kyle will be like, that's like on Gammy level. Like, getting advice from Gammy. That's like sitting and talking with Gammy. Like, he sees you as the height, the height of um, <laughs> and Everything, love, everything. I'm like, that's cool. I love it. Listen, they don't even understand. Gammy be working hard every day to just <laughs> make it through. But I love y'all. And since we since we are talking about love and we have about three minutes as we go out, I'm gonna play one of my favorite songs for us to it's it is not necessarily gospel, but it is so appropriate for what we're talking to. I've been listening to this for a long time. I got me some Stevie. Yeah. today Don't Send yours in right away
And that's it for me tonight and for Miss Vina and for Kia. Your chocolate smoothie, Sister Talk with Valerie, and we love y'all. Have a good evening. <laughs>